Hello, my fellow readers. This is Dark Symphony 777 back with another fan fiction review. As always, a link to start will be in the description below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts of the story. And finally, this is my opinion. My opinion is not indicative of everyone in the world, so please respect that. So, we're going. I bet you're wondering what's with the quality of the camera. Well, I finally got my new camera, I set it up, I got my new mic, right there, <laughs> and you know, I finally got every, I finally got everything set up, so I'm happy to say that, you know, video quality itself is going to be very different. But, now that I got that out of the way, let's get into the fan fiction. So the fan fiction I'm reviewing is Professor Ark by Kaur Al-Aram, it is a Ruby fan fiction, oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy. Now, <coughs> I'm not that big a fan of Ruby. Uh, I like certain aspects of it. I like the characters. I really like characters like Penny and Neo. I liked Roman. Um, I didn't, for the most part, for, mo for most of the main characters, I wasn't really a fan of. I don't like Yang. I, I don't particularly like Weiss. But then again, but then again, I really only saw like some episodes of the first three seasons, so I don't know how how it changed past that. So you know, I'm kind of uninformed in that regard. But uh, this story was actually suggested to me by one of my subscribers. Thank you. <coughs> and um, this is one of those fan fictions that kind of defines the fan fiction scene of Ruby because. Certain fan fictions, they kind of have a, a central thread, a central theme with like a lot of the more popular stories. Like with Naruto, it's always a lot of the fan fictions where Harem, like Naruto, it gets all the bitches. It gets all the bitches. And with One Piece, it was uh, something happens. Uh, Luffy goes back in time to the beginning of the show and then just basically redoes everything. Like Peggy, Peggy Sue story. With this one, uh, the theme is uh, basically just a retelling of the first three seasons, but something different happens to kind of kind of change how the story is told. And this is one of those stories. The story actually has like seven plus seven thousand plus reviews, so that's that's really cool. Something also off offhand, I wonder if if the if uh, Core actually knows that there's actually a legit wiki of all his stories. I've heard, I've heard of fan fictions having their own wikis. I heard of fan fictions having their own trope pages. I, I, di I didn't know an author of fan fiction would have a wiki. Huh. So let's get the review started. Let's talk about the plot. So the plot actually stars Duan Art. You know, you know, l l the guy with no semblance and no aura. It's like, I'm, I'm just... Just here, with the sword and the shield. Don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, and he basically forged his way into Beacon. Not normally. He actually got Roman to forge his, forge his documents. To say, hey, Roman, can you, uh, you can forge my documents to get me into Beacon, right? Yeah, sure. sure. Just, you just, just maybe owe me a favor, right, Neo? <laughs> she doesn't talk. Of course, she doesn't talk. Are you gonna say something, Neo? Oh, it's basically Neo in a nutshell. I love that. I love the crazy ice cream girl. Uh, so basically, Roman forges Yuan's uh, transcripts to be able to get into Beacon. However, Roman made the documents too good. And instead of becoming a student, Osmond's like, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh yeah, these are these are too good for a student. How would you like to be a, become a professor? What? Yes, how would you like to become a professor? Uh, 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 sure. <laughs> and so basically, and so basically, the, sco the story kind of snowballs from there. It's basically instead of a student, Juan Arc is a teacher, and then he becomes a psychologist, and he's helping like he's helping the members of Ruby and the other groups and dealing with stuff. It's very humorous. I mean, the story is labeled humor romance, um, and there's a lot of stuff happening. It basically follows similar aspects of uh, seasons one to three. Like I said, a lot of the a lot of 
popular Ruby fan fictions do that same thing. It's just this first three seasons, just something changes and changes the entire story. That's it. And it was very honestly. The story is actually pretty fun. Like it's not the best. I mean, I mean, it doesn't traditionally follow the Ruby formula mainly, mainly because it's more. This story is more focused on humor. Like, there's a running theme where, I kid you not, I'm going to describe what happens. Uh, uh, Dwan wants Roman to teach him how to fight. He's like, oh, no, I'm going to teach you how to fight. So, dude, who's going to teach me how to fight? Neo! <laughs> and Neo starts living with Dwan in his little, in his teacher's lounge sort of room, dorm thing. And, and starts putting her ice cream in his freezer and starts putting her undergarments into his undergarment drawer. <laughs> And so what happened was, uh, Dwan bumps into Blake, Blake actually was carrying some smut, uh, and Dwan was trying to learn about Fauna stuff to, to be able to, like, um, do psychology stuff on Nova Scarlatina, and so they actually switch books, like, Blake gets a psychology book, Dwan gets the smut, Yang's like, we gotta go sneak into his room. <laughs> and so Blake and, and Yang sneak into his room. They, they, you know, they start looking for his book, and, you know, Yang accidentally grabs one of Neo's under, uh, undergarments. One kicks him out, and he's like, oh, let, let, let's hope it doesn't get worse. And then here comes Glinda. Glinda sees both, Glinda sees Yang and Blake kind of, kind of holding, kind of holding sharp old shoulders, and Yang still has the, um, still has the, un Neo's underwear in her hand. He's like, and, and thus starts the running theme of Bumblebee. <laughs> I kid you not, that's an actual running theme throughout the entire story that everyone thinks, Oh, Blake and Gang are in love! Don't, don't let your kids near them. <laughs> not to mention another theme where Juan honestly thinks the smut belongs to Weiss, so everyone starts thinking Weiss is a nympho. Including her sister Winter, apparently. No joking. <laughs> no joking. Doesn't think that happens. Winter gives a gift to to Weiss. And it's like, oh, I got a gift. And she opens the book. It's full of smut. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of a lot of the story's plot is mostly humorous. Like, like the main core of the plot is just. Uh, what, how Ruby would act if Juan wasn't a teacher, and he was more of a professor, and he was kind of t helping him out, like, he sees Pyra being lonely because in the actual show, Pyra, uh, Pyra and Juan are on the same team, but in this version, since Juan is not on the same team, he's a professor, uh, Pyra, Pyra gets hooked up with Velvet Scarlatina, and she's kind of upset that she can't really hang out with her friends like Coco and the rest of Team Coffee, and... She was held back because of an injury and stuff like that. And so, you know, Juan tries to help help them and, you know, there's lots of little art, there's lots of little story beats and stuff like Juan kind of making everything worse, but also because he really wants to help, he really genuinely wants to help everyone. Like, Pierre is, like, very lonely. He offers, let me hang with Ruby. <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay. And so, they, you know, Ruby and Pierre become friends, and now, you know, he has to struggle to try and figure out because um, uh, his, the, the Pierre's team, or, 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 or the Ray's team, Team Raven, are basically kind of fractured, and he has to try and fix that. And so, they, you know, they, they do all these things. And throughout the story, he runs into, ne he, gets, he gets taught by Neo, he runs into Roman, he deals with Cinder, because everyone thinks, like, a running theme throughout this entire story is the is the theme of happenstance. Uh, so basically, a lot of people keep mistaking Juan for these big, as this big hero, or, or in Cinder's case, a big manipulative villain like her, when Juan just wants to be a teacher and just be left alone, and, and just he keeps doing all these things that are by accident, or by design accident, but people keep misinterpreting that as, you know, him being bigged up, like he can't, like he helps everyone out and everything, and people don't know, and people kind of mistake it, like they know, like the only people who really know what's going on is Juan, John, and 
and Neil. Like, when Neil kind of, like, attaches herself to John, it's like, she understands, like, half the stuff that goes on. It's like, mainly, it's, oh, you're just, it, it's just, just, they're just mistaking you for something. All right. Uh, another instance is uh, the battle between John and his father, Nicholas. Uh, they do, uh, they spar on, like, one of those train state things on the beacon, and, like, uh, Neo is disguised as a little girl, calling herself Noah Ark. And so right when they're about to fight, you know, Neo as the little girl, like, Nick, uh, Nicholas actually acknowledges that Neo is there, and Neo, and then Neo goes up to the stage and, you know, starts, like, inching herself right in front of Juan, like, I don't want you, I don't want him hurt. And, you know, Juan tells her, you know, you gotta get up the stage, you, know, you gotta watch, and it's like, like, okay. But secretly, Blake is actually watching him in the rafters with her gun, with, um, I can't remember what her name is. Uh, where the gun actually pointing at her, at uh, Juan's father, because, you know, she mi misinterprets the wrong way. She, like, she doesn't know that Neo is in disguise and stuff like that. And so the story uh, kind of continues on there. Like I said, there, there are several arcs. Ha the term happenstance is, like, the main theme of the story. Uh, it goes from season one with, like, the teaching, season two with, like, everything going on with the White, with the white Fang and Roman, like, constantly... Want having to deal with uh, favors from Roman and Cinder and stuff like that, and then you have season three, which is the evil festival with him, with uh, with Juan trying to help out both Team Ruby and Team Revan, uh, and, and trying to uh, prove the teamwork and trying to trying to at least stop Cinder from everything. And honestly, the story kind of ends on a cliff that leads into the sequel, where of course Osman dies, uh, Pira actually lives. Uh, and Juan becomes head ruler, master of of Beacon. Also, also Juan and, and Glinda Goodwitch actually hook up, and then they break up. That's fine. <laughs> so, so I sorry for kind of meandering through the plot because it's kind of the plot is kind of really hard to describe because it's it's plot is not really that focused because the point of view constantly changes, like, there's a couple points where it switches to, like, characters like Neo, and Blake, and, uh, Velvet and Pierre, and all, and all that, it, it switches between, uh, point of views a lot, <clears throat> but it doesn't really, it doesn't really meander along, it kind of stays focused as best as, very, very accurately, so, it's very fun, it's a very fun, entertaining read, I wouldn't say this was a very serious story, except for very, near the end where, you know, with, with the Cinder stuff. Um, but it's, it's, the at, at its core, the story is very, it's less a serious story and more just a very fun romp. It's, it's very hilarious, um, and that's really it. Uh, characters, you have Ron, uh, who's the main, Ron, uh, <laughs> that name is so confusing to pronounce with the spelling and everything. J U A N E. Like, John Juan. Hold on, Juan Fian. Yata. Yata. Um, and so he, you know, he goes from this very. He goes from typical John Arc. Like, he's very coward. Like, he constantly sees himself as very weak. But as the story goes along, you know, what Neil actually training him is, like, and, and Neil's training is just basically. Grabs his shoulder, kicks him in the junk, and said, "You're supposed to dodge that." <laughs> well, in her neo-esque way, like, <laughs> what I do? It's like, and then she goes, "Well, I'm gonna tell up," and she's like, "Okay," teleports in, into the middle of a bunch of neo, uh, grim and festive woods, just kick their asses. <laughs> Live, damn you! And it's very entertaining. Uh, there's not, there's way too many characters to talk about, so I'm only going to talk about the main three, main four. John, like I said, is John, until he get, until he grows up, he, he, he learns that he actually starts to become to like becoming a teacher, a sit, well, assistant teacher, professor sort of thing, psychologist sort of, sort of thing. And, you know, he gets confidence over the course of the story. It's a very simple character arc, like a guy getting confidence. It's, it's very much a, a coming of life sort of thing. I like how it, I like how he was handled. Uh, then there was Neo. Neo, Neo was the same. Like she, it takes it takes Neo so long for her to get actual character development, mainly because 
Neo, in, in my opinion, Neo is not exactly an easy character to write. She's very, you know, she, she can't talk. And so it's very hard to kind of be able to direct how she does because you, have, you specifically only have to direct her with motion and facial expressions. And that's not exactly easy on a um, literary level. Like, you know, yeah, it's one thing to like have a new character and you're doing a simple thing and you're doing but when you're when the characters are one of the main characters and the story focuses a lot on Neo. Like it the main dynamic is Juan and, and Neo. Despite the fact the story is technically John hooking up with Linda, the main dy the main two characters are John and Neo. They are they are the two most important characters, mainly because of their dynamic. Yeah, there's other main characters like Blake and Kira and Glenda and and Cinder on the second half of the story, but the main but the main core dynamic is Jan and Neo. And Neo is basically still very sadistic. However, as the story goes on, you know, you start to see her kinda kinda go into like yandere thing where, you know, she starts to actually care about John. Like I meant like I mentioned earlier with with when John's about to fight her, his father, Neo, you know, in disguise, starts to, like, inch in front of him to protect him because she doesn't want him to go. And and you actually start to see her have emotion despite, you know, her actually caring about... We'll talk more about that later. Um, Neo actually starting to very much care, leading to, like, Neo just smooching on John. It's like... It's like, uh -huh. <laughs> And he's like, and she's like blushing, like, and it got to the point that when, then Roman basically tied, basically orders Nino, it's like, you gotta keep John from messing everything up. She's very reluctant, like, she, she's doing it, but she, but she, you can, the story actually acknowledges the fact that it comes off like she, she really doesn't want to do it because she actually really cares about him like a friend, like a, like a true friend. Same thing with Roman. Like Roman is important to the story too. Uh, then the other two characters are, of course, uh, Pura and Blake. Blake, of course, you know, Blake is obsessed with the white thing and everything. A lot of the main plot points actually revolve around Blake because, of course, season one and two kind of, kind of have, in terms of the main plot, actually focus on Blake's whole connection with the white thing and all that. So John is trying to help, kind of help her out and, and stuff like that. And so, you know, John actually, technically, as, as detention, takes Blake as a secretary to help to help him with the paperwork while he's trying to figure everything out. And she likes it. They like hanging out. Like, if it wasn't for Neo, then, you know, Blake would probably be the second most important character. Like, she is very important to the, to the main plot of the story. Like, she doesn't have as much important as, say, like, John or Neo or Pira, but Blake is a necessity in terms of the overall plot structure because a lot of the key plot points actually kind of go through her, and she's the one who's kind of directing everything. Like here's what you know with with a lot of the part with a lot of things like with the um, when Juan runs into Roman and Roman is like, hey, I I I don't want to be embarrassed by the underworld, so um. I'm gonna beat you. I'm, you're gonna let me beat the crap out of you. It's like, just, just make it, just make it entertaining. What do I get after? You get a favor. <laughs> you, you get a favor. <laughs> like, okay. And the final, but, but Blake has a astounding impact. Like I said, back to Nicholas. Blake is actually watching because she doesn't want one to leave. Not because you know she has a crush on them. But because she cares about him as sort of like a big brother figure because she he helped her out so much that he's like, I don't want you to leave. I consider you a friend. I consider you like, yes, reluctantly, I can I, I like being your secretary. I don't like it, but it's like, it's, it has its own charm that you're actually helping me go through my problems sort of deal. So Blake sees Juan as a truth just as a true friend. And finally, the, the final main character is Pira. Of course, Pira Nikos is the perfect girl. Just like Blake, a lot of the story beats, especially in the second half of the story, kind of go through her. Uh, she's very important to the story. She has that kind of... She's basically like Pira. Like, she's the only... Like, she's the character that kind of most stays the same in the story... In, in, 
in terms of the main story. Because Neo changes, Wanda changes, even Blake changes to a point, but Pura is the only one that kind of stays the same as in her canon counterpart. She doesn't, she's the only one that doesn't really change too much from her counter, from her canon counterpart. Even characters like Gang and Ruby and Whis at least change a little bit because of John, uh, John's interventions and, you know, helping out the dynamic. Like, Ruby actually becomes more confident way sooner. But Pyrrha is the outlier in that she doesn't, she stays, she stays pretty much the same, which works in her favor because her character is very important in season three, so it makes sense that, that you would, there wouldn't be a lot of change with her. Like, the only thing that really changed is her dynamic with Velvet, like, like, because, you know, Velvet wanted to be with Team Coffee, and, and Pyrrha is like... I don't know, I want to be her friend, I want to be her partner, but she's refused to go, and so, you know, once, you know, Velvet opens up when they nearly die, you know, Velvet's like, I want you to, I want you to come with me and team coffee, <laughs> hang out with Coco, and her mini gun of death, uh, and, and, you know, they kind of become awkward friends, but they kind of like each other that much, like, that's good friends, so, you know, P like I said, Pyrrha doesn't really change that much. Granted, there are other characters, like Torchwick was really good, Cinder was really good, but first support was hilarious, like, let, let's be honest, you in, in terms of sheer hilarity, Professor Port was probably the, fun, the, the funniest character. He carried a lot of humor for me. Um, Yang was actually pretty entertaining. I don't like how a lot of the humor that came from Yang was very sexual in nature. I understand that's pretty... I don't know if that's part of Yang's core thing. I, like I said, I don't know much about the characters. I don't know if sexual humor is, is truly her thing. But I do think it kind of went on way too long. But that's just me. If, if it's done that way on purpose, then it's done that way on purpose. I just think... Eh. And of course, there's there's Ruby. She, be, she she acts like Ruby, but she gets more confident faster because she has a crush on Juan, and basically he teaches her to be comp more confident and lead, actually lead as a team much faster. And finally, there's Glinda, who basically is like Glinda, but she kind of confident. She kind of softens. She actually has sex with John, and then she kind of finds out that oh my god, I had sex with a minor. <laughs> it's like we don't talk about this. Okay, we don't talk about this. <laughs> oh. Uh, but that's that's it with the main character. Like the main four characters were John, Neo, Blake, and Pyrrha. And, and as <clears throat> as the main quartet, those characters were really well done. Like I said, the only one that really didn't change a lot was Pyrrha. Every other character changed drastically with you get how you get how the story flowed and everything. Pacing it was a little too slow for I think this type of for this type of for humor romance like. It's basically a rom com. It, I, I do think, like especially in the in the middle part, it could have sped up a, a little bit. But I do think the pacing of overall is actually pretty fun. The sentence structure is fine. It's like the fact the story, the story's point of view, changes a lot. Like I kid you not, it changes a lot, especially in especially in the second half of the story. Like. Like, the story actually changes from John's point of view, to Neil's point of view, to Blake's point of view, Pyrrha, Nora, um, <clears throat> Velvet, uh, Cinder. It changes in the blink of an eye, but you don't, but it's su done in such a way that it's very natural and it flows very well. And you don't notice the point of views. You don't notice the, the point of view changes. And it comes off as very natural and entertaining. It feels very... Very, very, unlike a lot of other stories where I see where where there's too like a lot of point of views that kind of feel stilted. Like uh, you could have did more, but this one kind of but the point of views kind of flow together in a very, very extremely well done way that doesn't encroach upon the pacing or the overall story structure of of Professor Arc. It's really well done. Grammar error, like, I think the only grammar error I saw was, like, a single, was, I think, a single misletter, like, a very late in the story, like, things like, I think it was the Evel, uh, Vitel, um, vegetable, festival chapters, I can't remember which one, it was, but it was one of those blanking you missed it once, I can't, I can't even remember what, what the error was, I think, yeah, I can't even remember what the error was, 
Um, but overall, it was a very entertaining story. So that is the overall review. I have, final thoughts on that is a very entertaining, a very entertaining story with great characters. It's, it's telling that the worst character is Mercury and Emerald, mainly because they just don't do enough. They just really don't do enough to kind of. They just they kind of just blend into the background. It's like uh, these two. Uh, um. The, pa the pacing is really good. Like I said, uh, the point of view it feels any it feels any other story. Uh, I see I've seen stories where it changes point of views a lot and it kind of and it very comes off stilted. Um, the night is passing is one of them. Oh, the night is passing is very very rough when it comes to those point of view changes. Um, the gra like I said, the gra there was a single grammar error. But I can't remember where it was because it was just, it was such a minor one that it's like, it's negligible. Uh, but overall, the plot was great. The characters were amazing. Uh, the pacing, everything. So, would I recommend the story? Hell, yes. I think this story was phenomenal what it tried to do. It basically told a very simple story. John becomes an art, a teacher instead of a student. And let's just mess, let's just see what happens with the overall start, the overall plot of Ruby Season 1 to 3. And that's it. Favorite part, Chapter 41. Uh, so I I know I'm not supposed to talk about spoilers that much. Like I said, I talked about spoilers earlier, but those are more just, just jokes. But this one I kind of need to go into detail for because how important it was and how 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 deep it was so basically chapter 41 uh john gets a call from his parents saying that they're going to come and, and take him home because you're putting yourself in danger and stuff like that and john starts drinking and he starts you know he starts getting drunk and then neo shows up and you know she you know she basically says okay we're going to teach i'm going to teach you and like john's not having any of it and John starts yelling at Neo, and then you actually get to see her like, the, you, like Neo legitimately doesn't get character development until this chapter. That's that's how well done. That's how much work put that that um, Kaur had to put into Neo to get her to start getting growing as a character. Mainly because again, Neo was such a hard character to kind of work with. Uh, but Neo starts, you know, she actually starts to show emotion, like she gets ner like she gets nervous over what's happening with John. And, and basically what happens is Neo's trying to cheer him up and, and stuff like that. And John's not having any of it, he's still drinking and stuff like that. And so Neo leaves. So John is like moping. And then in comes Blake with Neo disguised as Noah. And Neo and John and Blake actually start talking, and so Blake actually kind of opens up to what, how much help John was to, to help her out and her character development. And it's it's a very touching emotional scene because all throughout the story, John actually looks behind uh, Blake at Neo, and Neo's still in the sky, but she has her re her regular. Uh, Dicom, Dicom, multicolored eyes, and you actually see that she's very nervous. She's actually very sad, and and so Blake actually helps, like saying, "You helped me. Let me help you for once," you know. And it's a very emotion. It's a very touching scene. It really, it very much completes Blake's character arc. It starts Neo's character arc, and it's. And it kind of catalyzes what need what John needs to do to finish his character arc because, you know, he has all these he has all this weight of everything happening with Cinder, and you know, with Pira and all this and the Evil still say um, details uh, festival, and now you know this it, it was just too much he broke down, and the store the chapter actually ends with Neo actually offering her ice cream. You know, like, you want, you want some ice cream? Like, and it's such a touching thing that Neo was willing to give up her ice cream. I can't remember if the, if the ice cream thing actually happened in that chapter. I think that, 
I know it did happen, I just can't remember 100% if it happened in chapter 41. But at the end of the chapter, it comes with, like, Blake saying, you know, you can talk to me, I'm willing to help you out, if you help me. She leaves, Neil turns back in, uh, into Neo, and John basically says, I want you to train me all night. And it's like, and Neil's like, with a very happy smile, and it was very touching, like I said, the overall mood, like, like, it, that one conversation, though, that one conversation did so much, like, it was so touching and heartwarming, and the fact that you can also see the amount of, like, the amount of character development and what, what John did over the course of the story, in that one conversation, it was a very touching moment, it was very heartwarming. Is there anything I would change? Mm. Oh wait, I didn't finish, I, would, I, I didn't finish Fair Part, sorry about that, I'm kind of going ahead of myself. I do think... Uh, I do think that that entire chapter was such a well done character that like finishing off char Blake's character, starting Neil's character, uh, showing and also finally showing how much growth John went through, and it was it was very very emotional and stuff like that. So you know, kudos for for. for that amount of work that you did in one conversation that was as good as finished doing a lot of stuff well in that one chapter. And that's my that's pretty much my favorite part. Whatever so would I change anything? No, not really. The only thing I would add really is just add character um, character tags for Neo, Blake, and maybe Pira because Pierre is not as important as Nate, as Neo and Blake. I get why the author only left John Ark as the character tag because a lot of authors they like to leave like only one tag saying, "Oh, here's the main character," and just read on to like as the as more characters are see who the other main characters are. But I think that it's at a point that you can easily just it's been three years since the story was finished. You can easily just slot in Neo and, and Blake, and I don't think anyone will notice maybe switch romance with drama like a humor humor drama sort of thing because a lot of the a lot of the key moments of the story are actually drama like i said chapter 41 there was chapter 43 with the fight between john and nicholas it was very it, while the fight itself wasn't very well written that's mainly because it was more supposed to focus on john's growth or anything else so it's like that's an e like you can easily slide by that by the fact that it's like oh it wasn't it wasn't that well written. It was written enough to get the point across, but it was more focused on John's growth. Not to mention there wasn't actually good an actually decent fight scene with like Neo, Roman, and John versus Cinder at the end. So it so it was really done well overall. So like I said, there is nothing there is nothing structurally wrong with the story. You don't want to change anything. It's it's a like five hundred thousand plus story. I wouldn't change anything. Just add, just add the character tags. Maybe switch room, romance with drama. That's pretty much it. So that is my review on Professor Arc. The next couple of videos are going to be based are basically going to be the top top ten, and then finally, hopefully, I am able by the end of the year I can fin I can do the introspection on the Mole Trader Abroad. So. Thank you for a very entertaining 2020, everyone. I will see you next time. This has been Dark Symphony 777, and cut.